Vaughan, Mr. Batten, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, in January 2014, the final restrictions will be lifted on immigration into Britain from Romania and Bulgaria. Uh, a further 29 million people will give, be given the automatic right of entry, and it's estimated that this will result in at least 50,000 extra immigrants per year over the next five years. Now, Britain is already overwhelmed and swamped with immigration because as a member of the Uni uh, European Union, we have surrendered our right to control it. The British have nothing against Bulgarians or anyone else. We don't blame them for wanting to better their lives. But why do so many Bulgarians want to leave their country? Bulgaria is a desperately poor country under the control of criminals. Let me quote from the New York Times, quote, Politics is played to the death in Bulgaria, where the lives of politicians can be as cheap as spent bullets, and murky business group wage a murderous struggle for their cut of everything from real estate deals to millions in European aid, unquote. Atanas Atanasov, a former counterintelligence chief, has said, quote, other countries have the mafia, in Bulgaria the mafia have the country, unquote. How can democracy prosper under these conditions? The lack of a free media and press, a corrupt judiciary and legal system, widespread electoral fraud and criminal control of business. No surprise then that many Bulgarians will choose to move somewhere else. Once the right thing that the EU did do was to suspend payments to Bulgaria. It is not right to send millions in aid for their criminals to plunder and make them richer. I feel desperately sorry for decent Bulgarians, but I feel even sorrier for my own country, which is being destroyed by membership of the European Union. The British political establishment is dedicated, or seems dedicated, to turning Britain into a third world country. Britain cannot solve Bulgaria's problems by importing Bulgarians. Yeah, I got a blue card from Mrs. Dodds. Do you accept it, Mr. Batten? Mrs. Dodds. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, uh, and thank you to the member for taking the question. Much has been made of uh, individual rights and liberties in uh, this very interesting debate. Would the Honourable Member agree with me that it is time that governments from the member states who are represented here in this Parliament caught up with the international community, notably the United Kingdom and the United States, in classifying Hezbollah as a terrorist organisation, given the fact that last night an investigation concluded that it was behind the bombing attack in Bulgaria in July 2012 which killed five Israeli tourists. To, to yes, Mrs. Dodd, I would agree with you. I think that we should designate groups like that, such as terrorism, because the last thing that we want to see is what happened in Northern Ireland. Terrorism and uh, politics often go hand in hand, and I would hate to see it happening in my country, as it did in Northern Ireland, that the terrorists actually propel people into government where they are now. And, of course, I would like to see action taken uh, against Islamic fundamentalism wherever it raises its head because it goes hand in hand with terrorism. In London, we now have Sharia patrols intimidating people on the street into what they can and can't do or can and can't wear, and gays have been intimidated in the Bethnal Green area. Now, I think that it's very important. I take your point. I totally agree with you. Um, I've got two more requests on the blue card, but I think I'll just do one per speaker. Yeah, but I'm sorry, we need to move on. We're getting, we're getting very badly delayed. Point of order, I'll take, if it is one. I'd like to point out to Mr. Batten that uh, Northern Ireland is his country. Right, jolly good. No, it no. is part of the United Kingdom, and I accept that. That was a slip of the tongue. But, of course, the European Union is busy regionalising our nation, so very soon it probably won't be the United Kingdom anyway when Scotland chooses to leave. And I expect okay. you'd probably, as a Conservative, be in support of the as well. Fine. Next speaker. Mr, um, Mr. Batten uh, wants to uh, put a question to you. Would you accept it? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. Van Orden, um, your report five years ago, uh, if you highlighted all these problems, which were very serious problems then, 
and which you now say are still very pro serious problems and in fact even worse probably than when you wrote your report. Why did you then feel it necessary to recommend Bulgarian entry to the EU when it clearly didn't fulfil the criteria that one would expect the most basic criteria about rule of law and democracy uh, in an entrant country? I'm very happy to answer that. The questions that were raised then are valid today as I've indicated now. But the reasons why it was right for Bulgaria to exceed at that time were absolutely correct and remain correct. This was at a time uh, when Bulgaria needed to have the confidence of being very much part of a Western club at a time of growing Russian influence in that part of the world, when they needed economic confidence and when investors in Bulgaria needed to have the prospect of stability and at a time when there were extremist forces on the rise in Bulgaria that needed to be allayed. For all of those reasons, it was right for Bulgaria to join the European Union. But we, at that time, we made it very clear that there was a need for continuing reform, and reform in particular in those areas which I have now indicated. My disappointment is that they haven't addressed those concerns with sufficient uh, urgency. Um, 